To make sense of the physical world, we need to have the notion of measurement, and it lies at the heart of modern science. Humankind has attempted to measure length, mass, and time since early human civilizations. Our ancestors tried many different methods to standardize mass, length, and time. Ancient Greeks used different body parts to measure lengths, such as handspan, palm, and breadth of a finger, which made sense, as most of the daily life things, such as clothes, tools, and houses, needed to scale to an individual's size. The obvious problem of measuring sizes based on body parts is that they vary from person to person, and people's body change with time. Therefore, a standard is required to calibrate all the measurements, which is accessible as well as invariable. Imagine a world where the units change with countries, just like currencies do. Can you think of how much of a problem would that create? In the modern world, we avoid such problems by adopting an international system of units, or SI units, also called the metric system. All representative nations agree to a standard for a physical quantity, which only implies acceptance of an operational definition for quantities such as length, time, mass, temperature, pressure, and electric current. In mechanics, we only focus on length, mass, and time, the three base quantities. First, let us explore the concept of time. Undoubtedly, time holds a unique place among all the quantities in nature. What is time? A question that contains many philosophical and scientific conundrums. The notion of time is linked with the concept of a clock. A clock is simply an apparatus that counts a repetitive event. Any natural phenomenon with regular periods of oscillation can be a clock. The base unit of time, one second, can be defined in terms of a solar day. However, the duration of a day varies due to atmospheric tides and Earth's fluid core. Alternatively, one can define one second as one swing of a pendulum in a mechanical clock. But different clocks may have different pendulums due to manufacturing errors. Moreover, we would like to divide time into much smaller intervals to measure even fractions of a second. What can be used as a standard that is invariable and accessible to everyone? Something similar but more accurate than pendulums, quartz crystals, or Earth's rotation? The answer lies in the heart of the matter, i.e. atoms. All atoms of a particular element have precisely the same electronic configuration, and these atoms resonate at an extremely consistent frequency. This means different atomic clocks using the same element have exactly the same pendulum. To be more precise, scientists rely on the constant energy difference between different levels that these electrons can occupy. Formally, a second is defined as the number of cycles or frequency of light at which the cesium atoms will change from one state to another. The frequency, in this case, is 9,192,631,770. But you may ask, why this much precision is needed to define one second. The most important application of atomic clocks is in the global positioning system, also known as GPS, which is crucial for almost everything in the modern world, that is, from food deliveries to complex navigational systems. And how do clocks help to achieve such a feat? The answer lies in the nature of time, which, as shown by Einstein in his famous work, is relative. An atomic clock in a moving satellite experiences time differently due to weak gravity and ticks faster than clocks on Earth. If engineers do not consider this relativistic effect, then GPS devices would become useless in less than a day, as the errors in timekeeping would result in a distance prediction off by approximately 6 to 7 miles. This brings us to the next base quantity, length. Historically, one meter has been defined as one ten millionth of the distance from the North Pole to the equator. Such a distance cannot be accurately measured 
and it also changes to the distortions in the shape of the Earth. Later, in 1889, length was defined as the distance between two fine lines engraved near the ends of a platinum iridium bar, the standard meter bar, which was kept at the International Bureau of Weights and Measures near Paris. But physical representations can be unstable. They can change over time or in different environments. And therefore, similar to the case of time, we resorted to the atomic units. In 1960, a new definition of meter based on wavelength of light was adopted. Calibrating against the standard meter bar, one meter was redefined as the distance for approximately 1,650,000 wavelengths of orange-red light emitted by atoms of krypton-86. However, the invention of lasers and laser spectroscopy rendered this definition obsolete. The speed of light, a fundamental constant, could not be measured accurately due to the limitations in the precision in the definition of one meter. Hence, scientists flipped the reasoning and assigned the speed of light in vacuum the precisely measured value c, and then redefined one meter as the distance traveled by light in a specified time interval. The question again arises, why bother with such precision? The application of this definition of meter enables us to traceably measure distances from a few picometers up to the distance of the Voyager spacecraft from Earth. The definitions of one second and one meter help us to study the fundamental questions of natural sciences. The Large Hadron Collider Particle Accelerator, which confirmed the existence of the elementary particle Higgs boson in 2012, is installed in 30 kilometers of underground tunnels. To make it work, the steering magnets must be placed to an accuracy of one-tenth of a millimeter every 100 meters. The next in the series is mass, for which the SI unit is kilogram or kg. The standard for one kilogram until May 2019 was a 130-year-old cylinder of platinum and iridium kept at the International Bureau of Weights and Measures near Paris. However, a physical object loses mass, and the standard prototype of a kilogram lost 15 micrograms since its creation, which is equivalent to the mass of one eyelash. It may look insignificant for common purposes, but the cylinder is no longer exactly one kilogram by the old definition. To get rid of these issues, scientists decide to link the mass to some fundamental constant of nature. In this case, Planck's constant. The Planck's constant is linked with energy, and energy is linked with mass. Scientists can accurately measure the value of Planck's constant, and therefore they redefine mass in terms of Planck's constant, where the definition of one second and one meter is given in terms of cesium frequency and speed of light, respectively. Using modern techniques, we can measure active components of drugs that can weigh less than a millionth of a kilogram up to oil sea platforms that can weigh over 200 million kilograms. You may notice now that all three base quantities are defined in terms of fundamental constants of nature. The significance of a uniform system of units can also be illustrated with the story of the 1999 Mars Climate Orbital Mission. NASA's contractor provided the engine specifications implicitly in English units, which uses inch and pound for length and force measurements. NASA, perhaps during the long gestation of any space project, had joined the metric world and expected specifications in SI units. Due to the mismatch, the prop descended too low into Mars's atmosphere and burned up. A simple mismatch in units cost NASA millions of dollars. The topic of measurement and units may look dull and uninteresting, but it forms the basis of everything in our civilization.